Hi, this is Mike Richmond. It's time for another mini lesson in biostatistics. This lesson is particularly for students in Math 221B biostatistics. This mini lesson is about confidence intervals and how to interpret them. There are lots of ways to interpret a confidence interval and lots of ways to verbalize the confidence interval. Unfortunately, a lot of them are actually incorrect. So I'm going to go over some of the most common examples of how to correctly interpret a confidence interval and which interpretations are inc incorrect. So, for example, if I were to come to you and say, hey, I've measured something and the 95% confidence interval is from 45 to 72, what does that actually mean? Well, here's what it means. We are 95% confident that the true mean of the population lies within the lower and upper bounds of the confidence interval. And that's by definition. So, there are lots of different ways to say this. For example, I might say, we are 95% confident that the true mean is somewhere in our confidence interval. This is a correct interpretation of the meaning of a confidence interval. Because I have a confidence level of 95% that I have actually captured the true mean somewhere between 45 and 72. Some might say, there is a 95% chance that the true mean is in our confidence interval. This is largely agreed by the statistics community to be a false statement. Why is it false? It sounds an awful lot like the one on the previous slide. But the interpretation should be like this. The true mean is a fixed value. It doesn't vary. It doesn't move around at all. It's a true mean. We may not know what it is, and in fact, we probably don't know what it is, but it is where it is, and it's fixed there. So saying that there's a 95% of the chance that the true mean is inside of our confidence interval, well, that's not exactly accurate. It either is or it isn't. So there's a 100% chance that it is or there's a 0% chance that it is. It has nothing to do with chance, really. It just has to do with the fact that it's a fixed value. So it's not the true mean that varies. It's our confidence interval that varies. And so the confidence interval is the thing that may or may not have the true mean inside of it rather than the other way around. Here's another example. There is a 95% chance that the population mean is in our confidence interval. Well, this is exactly the same thing as the previous slide because the population mean and the true mean are essentially the same thing. Same thing. So the argument that this is the right way to interpret this is the same, and they're both incorrect. Next example. 95% of all individual values in the population are in our confidence interval. Well, this may be pretty close to being true, but it's not 100% accurate because the confidence interval is actually a confidence interval on the mean and not necessarily a confidence inter in interval on the individual values. So to say that this is a 95% confidence interval on individual values would be false. And that is incorrect. Next example. 95% of the individual values in our sample are in our confidence interval. Again, same reasoning as on the previous slide. This is a confidence interval on the mean of the population and not a confidence interval on the individual values. So again, this one is also incorrect. Next example. Approximately 95% of all 95% confidence intervals that could be computed by sampling from the population will contain the true mean height. Okay, this is very wordy, and it's actually kind of a little bit goofy if you think about it. But, this is actually a correct interpretation of the confidence interval. Let me give you an example. I took some fake generated data from an Excel spreadsheet, and uh, it's got a mean of 50. So you can see I've drawn this blue line across here in the, uh, at 50. And then I went and sampled um, several values from the population uh, and each time I did a sample, I created a 95% confidence interval. So you can see this little red bar here that has a black dot at the top and a black dot at the bottom. That's the confidence interval with the upper and lower bound. Now, if you can see right off the bat that this first confidence interval here on the left and even the second one from the left side, neither of those confidence intervals contain the true mean. That was highly unusual. The very first two would not contain the true mean. Let's take a closer look. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got 100 different confidence intervals here, and it turns out that out of these, I've got 93% of them that contain the true mean. Now, the previous slide said 95% of all 95% confidence intervals contain the true mean. 
Well, bear in mind that that 95% is also a random variable and therefore subject to variation. So, for example, in this time when I did 100 different confidence intervals, only 93% of them contained the true mean. If I were to do it again, maybe I would get 96 or 97 or 98%. Who knows? But it's a random variable, and as you can see, most of the time the 95% confidence interval will contain the true mean, whereas sometimes it won't. Now again, this is a totally cooked example because I created the population already and I knew the mean was at 50 because that was the way I set it up. But this is just here to, to illustrate the principle. Okay, let's look at another example. We are 95% confident that the sample mean is somewhere in our confidence interval. Well, if you think about it, the sample mean is always going to be inside the confidence interval because the confidence interval is created from the sample mean. I take the sample mean, I figure out what my margin of error is, and I do sample mean plus or minus my margin of error. So 95% confidence interval will always contain the sample mean. This is a little bit of a tricky one because if, it were, if you were to say we are 95% confident that the population mean is somewhere in our confidence interval, then this would be more accurate. But this is the way this is written here, this is incorrect. Okay, that does it. Uh, I think I've gone over as many examples as I can think of as, of how you might see a confidence interval described in a qu uh, quiz or a test question. So I hope this has helped clear some of this up. Thanks for listening.